Good morning. I've just moved to Cleveland and I'm starting to get set up in the new apartment. So as I'm rebuilding my studio, I figured it'd be a good time to talk you through how I structure my workspace. This here is my main desk. The surface is three quarter inch plywood framed and braced by two by fours and the whole thing is held up by four by four legs also braced with two by fours. This thing is built sturdier than a house. I don't want any play or wobbling when it comes to my work surfaces. For me, the two foot by eight foot size is about perfect for maximizing workspace while not allowing much area for things to end up cluttered. Now, depending on if you already know me, you're probably wondering, who are you? What do you do? What's all this stuff for? Well, I do a bit of everything. Cameras, cars, leatherworking, soldering, mold making, sneakers. My primary use case for the studio right now is video production. A lot of editing and screwing around with cameras. The whole space has this handyman twist because I like to modify stuff that I already have and fix old things rather than constantly buying the newest and the newest and the newest. So I'm like somewhere between a techie Gen Z kid and a woodworking grandpa. Gosh, I really don't like this light in the center of the frame. Bro, this is not grounded. <laughs> Making a workspace that's ideal for the specific work you're doing can be huge when it comes to productivity. That's what all this is about. Front and center on the desk is mounted a microphone arm. This separates the two main work areas and allows the microphone to reach to either end of the space. The left side of the desk is for conceptual work. Anything digital, writing, drawing, and sometimes drawing on the desk itself. Here I have my computer. It's a computer. Two monitors for now. One is 4K, one is 2K. This one's basically always on DaVinci or Photoshop, so nice colors, high resolution. This one's usually on Chrome, so lower resolution and lower contrast, so reading hurts the old eyeballs less. I could make a whole other video about just my keyboards, but right now I'm using this ortholinear and a little hot swap PCB for a macro pad. The mouse and keyboard are wired. No batteries. SD card reader, audio interface, switch panel. Where is the switch panel? Oh wow, it's in the first place I looked. It's almost like I knew it was gonna be here and set up a camera. This thing runs all the overhead lights. I'll install those in a sec. Everything should be hard mounted. Hard mounting interfaces is a no brainer. Knobs, switches, and ports should always be in the same place. Not the mouse though. The mouse does generally need to move. So that's the left side of the workspace. I'll get to the right side in a second. Being able to guilt-free drive screws and mount things wherever I want on this desk is the whole reason I made it. I built this desk two years ago in the pursuit of a workspace that was totally mine. I'd never really had a space that I felt ownership of, going from shared childhood bedrooms to shared dorms. So building this space that I could really do anything with was exciting. I wouldn't have to ask anyone or pay any fines if I decided to drill holes or get paint everywhere. Now back to the current setup. The right side of the desk is more about physical work. Over here I do sanding, soldering, painting, taking apart cameras, except for when I do that on the other side too. The main feature of this side of the desk, other than the painted grid, is this overhead camera arm. It's actually just a microphone arm. It's the same one that my mic itself is hanging on. I just mounted this little L bracket onto it so I can put cameras and lights on it. This used to be a two axis overhead jig, which I made a video on, but more recently I've been working on this setup. This works really nicely for top down shots, but it can also mimic tripod shots from a ton of angles you normally would have a hard time getting. I've routed HDMI and AC power along the arm so it'll never die, and I can also use it to run streams. Using an arm like this rather than a normal overhead camera rig just totally changed the way I film projects. I definitely recommend it. Just don't buy the cheap mic arms on Amazon. They're like 25 bucks. This one was a uh, Gator Frameworks, it was like 50 bucks. Just make sure what you're getting can hold the weight of your camera. Um, maybe taking this off the camera arm and resting it precariously on the edge of the desk was a mistake. Well, that is a convenient segue, I guess, because the next section of the video is setting up the overhead lighting, which now I really need. <laughs> 
What are you looking at, bud? There's a super important part of this whole thing that isn't set up yet, and that's lighting. I think way too many makers are operating without enough light and not realizing it. Oh yeah, I forgot there's still broken glass down here. Being able to really see what you're doing while you're working with your hands is huge, and you don't really realize what you're missing until you get proper lighting. Okay, now how do I do this without the whole thing falling over? All right, everything's plugged in. It's the big test. Yeah, that's light. Ah, this is one of these smart bulbs. I hate these. A light bulb should not require Wi-Fi to function. There we go. So I built this whole frame for these lights out of some scrap wood. Uh, it doesn't need to hold much weight, obviously, so the quality of the build doesn't matter. At some point, if I want to turn this into like shelving up above it, I'll redo it with two by fours, but for now, the free thinner wood works fine. I use a bunch of these under cabinet lights that were on clearance for like 15 bucks a pair. I also use this little adjustable arm lamp, which I modified the springs on so it counterbalances correctly while hung upside down instead of right side up. So to diffuse some of this light so it doesn't just blind me while I'm working out my computer, I made this diffusion panel out of a PVC pipe frame and some cheap white mesh fabric. But recently, there was an apartment doing renovations near me, and I found this by the dumpster, which is one of those overhead uh, like fluorescent light diffusion panels, an upgrade of, of the thing I had made. So I'm gonna try to install this now. All right, everything's good to go. The lights are set up, the camera and mic mounts are all functional. I think this desk is gonna be a solid base to build out the studio from. By human logic, we sometimes confine ourselves to one plane of the universe. Over time, as your use case for a workspace changes and the work itself you're doing also changes, that ideal of a perfect space is always evolving. I couldn't know ahead of time what I would exactly want out of a workspace. What I need is the freedom to experiment. I wanna screw something in here and move it over there when I don't like it. I don't wanna buy an expensive desk and then have something about it bother me for the next 10 years I'm using it. The whole thing is about allowing for adaptability, preparing for the inevitable changes life brings. Now, this is getting awfully philosophical for a video about a table, but I find it's really easy to get stuck in the trap of making the right choice. What is the exact route I want to take in my career, my finances, whatever? You just can't know all of this stuff ahead of time, so the best course of action in my mind is to build a solid base so you have something to anchor into. Whether that's developing skills rather than worrying about a specific job, improving yourself personally rather than chasing a partner, or even driving a crappy car to save for a nicer one in the future. It's about building a strong, adaptable foundation rather than trying to reach for that theoretical perfect option. Is that a stretch? That might be a stretch. I'll just take it back to furniture. Workspaces are a mercurial thing. They change as you and your work change. If you're spending a lot of time somewhere, you should be thinking about how to actively improve it rather than just dealing with things the way they are. That's why I like building things to adapt, furniture and otherwise. Thank you for your time, and I hope you gain something.